Here we go. Well, you know that I ain't ever so Jesus, but I got a pretty face and no salary man. Welcome to France Club Berlin, where I have Michael Monroe with me. So this first of all, uh, welcome to Berlin, and what's Thank the vibe you. coming here? The vibe is great. I love Berlin. I wish I had played here more, and it's Germany in general. But uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah. Have you had time to spend in the city and see it a bit? <laughs> Certainly not. I've been doing interviews all day. <laughs> okay, so um, the one man, one man gang tour has already visited the uh, Nordics, Japan, and Hamburg last night. So, how has the tour been so far? It's been great. I mean, great, great audiences. Uh, last night was great in Hamburg. Before that, in Stockholm, that was fantastic. All the gigs have gotten better. Shape up the, uh, the set, set list has been shaped up a little bit though since uh, Norway. But then. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it one one gig at a time, and you know, it's been great. Okay, and how was Japan this time around? Japan in August was great. Yeah. We did the Summer Sonic Festival, and then we shot the video for uh, Last Train to Tokyo. Of course, it, that had to be filmed while we were there, so we did that. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic. We're going back to Japan in the beginning of uh, December for our own tour because uh, this was the festival summer sonic japan's always great you know one of my favorite countries yeah yeah how uh how were the fans how is fans it always to meet Japan japanese fans just, japanese fans and people are unique in, in the sense that they're very passionate about music about rock and roll and they're very loyal and uh just the way they brought up, they're very polite and uh, considerate and very smart, kind people and peaceful, never aggressive. Even when they drink, they're not aggressive, you know, like, you know, some Finnish people. Always somebody who gets, like, you know, <laughs> gets aggressive and starts picking a fight or something. And the Japanese don't ever do that. They're somehow, they just get, you know, they giggle a little and they pass out and that's it, <laughs> you know. But uh, they're really a really great, great bunch of people. I like the way their uh, their culture and the way they brought up is just really... Pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, and uh, how are you looking forward to the rest of the tour? Is it a big party every night or? <laughs> <laughs> big party every night? <laughs> oh yeah, man, you know, <laughs> just, uh, you know, uh, if you only knew, we're here to, to work, to do good stuff, you know, play good music, good rock and roll, authentic, from the heart, honest, and uh, good music with melodies and high energy rock and roll, a great show, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And uh, everyone can, everyone is welcome to uh, join the fun, have a good time, and uh, dig some good music. And we, uh, you know, partying is for those who can't play. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't, we don't really, we don't even have a practice actually when I have a chance to rehearse much because uh, everybody lives around the world. And one guitar player lives in New York, and the other guitar player in Toronto bass player in Mallorca or Helsinki and the uh, drummer lives in Stockholm so to get everybody into one place at the same time is a bit of a challenge so but we did rehearse one and a half days for this tour luckily everyone's such a good musician that we don't have to but uh, yeah for the set list and stuff uh, I, you know the party is on stage during the show you know that's what the whole thing is that's what I, we're con concentrating on it's the main thing that's what we're here mainly to do I know there are some bands that just mainly want to party and have chicks and drugs and rock and roll, that's cliche or no, that crap. But no one, you know, these days it's like people don't want to look at, you, you don't want to put up with uh, waiting with somebody for two hours when everyone else is ready to go, you know. It kind of gets in, the, gets in the way. Well, lucky these bands could play a little on the side, you know. Uh, there's some American, a lot of American musicians that say, well, why did you stop playing rock and roll? For chicks, man. For chicks? Wow. Well. Like you could play a little on the side while you're chasing the chicks. To me, it's always been about music, so, you know, that's about the party. That doesn't really happen any much anymore. We hang out with the band, though. We listen to a lot of music on the tour bus. We're the best of friends. We have a great time, always, wherever we go, and, you know, digging, in, digging some good music and talking about music, mainly. That's how we hang out, you know, the rest of the time. Okay, yeah, and one, uh, one Man Gang tour, of course, follows the... One Man Gang album, so what are your thoughts and feelings about the album now that you get to play it for audiences? It's great, it's been waiting for a while to get to play the album, because it's been a, we haven't had, uh, well, it took a while before we put it out, so we're really happy to be able to play new stuff, uh, you know, we, we played the first, the album release gig in Helsinki, we played 11 songs of the album, 11 out of the 12, all except one, and uh, 
we did the same in Norway, the first gig in Nassau, but then it was kind of too much. Uh, uh, some uh, this band can't play too many slow la or mid tempo songs that uh, it's a bit too long of a dip in the middle. So we got rid of a couple and tightened it up, and now it's really now the set is really good. You know, we got seven songs of the new album, uh, anyways. So that's good. Yeah, is there already uh, like uh, live favorites from the album? Uh, Well, I like John. Pl- John Planet is always good. And the One Man Gang and the uh, and the uh, last one in Tokyo is good. Summer uh, Midsummer Nights is good. Pitfalls of Being an Outsider that works out great. Hollywood Paranoia I like better now. We played live than than on the record. Uh, they're all good. Yeah, it's, it's great to play them. Okay, let's go a bit back in the time to uh-huh. 2011. That was you can say that was the. F- Uh, first album of the new Michael Monroe band, Sensory Overdrive. 2011, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and after that you have, uh, well, that included, there's been four very tight rock and roll albums. So what in your mind in 2011 clicked and has been working to... Sammy Afra, I met Sammy Afra, I ran to Sammy and uh, it was my blood brother, he's my best friend throughout the years and uh, he was in Finland playing with the New York Dolls and they played in my in the town I live in now, in Turku, and they... Uh, Invited me up to jam with them. And then Sammy, Sammy told me after the, after the gig, he said he'd like to work with me again. And then, uh, then I said okay. I was just restarting my solo career, and then we went to the the ships along the river in Turku, and we were talking. As soon as one of them closed, we went to the next one. You know, all, talked all night till like four in the morning, uh, talking about putting together a new band. And I said, wow, Sammy's with me. That's almost almost half the band there already. And so. And then one thing led to another, and uh, in the beginning of 2010, we went to rehearse with uh, with these guys in uh, <coughs> in L.A. and uh, you know, and found found uh, you know we got Ginger Wildheart at first, and uh, it was replaced by Dragon for the second album, and then Dragon was pre- replaced by Rich Jones, who is in the band now. So this new album is like the second album in a row with the exact same lineup. Yeah, how do you see this time from 2011 as part of your whole career with the newfound chemistry with Sami Yaffa and? It's great because you know people keep telling me on the last four albums are the best, up, you know, the new one including you know uh, the last three plus the new one have been like some of the best work of my my life and my career. So I'd rather hear that than hear that uh, you know the new album's got one good song and then the rest of it's all from the past. You know. I'd rather be in this position of creating new material that's stronger, stronger than stuff I've done before. So that's that's. Uh, I'd rather be in that position. I think you know, I wouldn't want to be putting out anything that was like less than. Uh, you know, my motto is all killers, no fillers. Why would you want to put a weak song on a record? So, I'm really happy and you know glad that I never compromised for the wrong reasons. I've always maintained my integrity and uh, never sold out, never sold my soul. And I did not turn into an asshole in the process. That was very most important to, to me. No matter how much money or fame you may achieve or get, uh, you know, uh, that would mean absolutely nothing. That would mean jack shit if I didn't, uh, if I lost myself, if I lost my soul in the process, if I became a jerk, you know. It's easy to fall for the trappings of fame in this business, and there's so many yes men around. Everyone agrees with you, and your little fame is or whatever. And uh, you got to be careful, you know. You got to know who your real friends are and stuff, you know. So that was more important to me than anything else. And doing everything on your own terms, the integrity. It's all about integrity. Then, if you, after doing your own thing on your own terms, and you're, you know, not compromising for the wrong reasons or anything like that, uh, then you create art, and that you're happy with. If it gets successful commercially, is successful, then great. I'll take the money. I'll take, you know whatever comes along with it. But first, you got to do the do the work, do your uh, the right way. Do it on your own terms and do your own personal thing and put it out there, without thinking how much it's going to sell. How are we going to market this? And uh, you know, but the music business has no mu- music has no business in the music business. It hasn't had for a while, and that's why the quality of music, has, in my opinion, has gone down when you look at it from. Starting from the 60s, 60s, 70s, 80s, well, halfway through the 80s, it started to be more like a, the corporation started ruling. And it's a business for business. Big companies do business. They want to make an investment. They want my money back. Therefore, the musical quality uh, suffers 
and all these genres, the trends and stuff, you know, as soon as something has a name, like, you know, grunge or whatever, in my books it's over, because everyone s tries to sound like the, the grunge, whatever, the one big band that made it, like Nirvana, a great band, but then there's like two million bands trying to sound like Nirvana, but never as good but, uh, as the original, but then, then they all sound the same, you know. In the past, we you know, bands and artists made music for music six. And that's why there was better. There were more personalities. There was more, there was more personality, and everyone had more of a unique style, because we, you know, made music for music, and not for a, a big business. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is there uh, some grand plan for this band for years to come? Of course, now there's a new album out and touring. But we're touring this album yeah. next, uh, probably a couple of years from now. We'll be touring uh, the One Man Gang album, and uh, we, have already, uh, we already have plenty of songs. I mean, we wrote, we had eight, we recorded 18 songs for the album, you know, originally, and then uh, came up with the uh, final, I mean, you know, the 12 songs that ended up in the album were carefully thought of, and uh, so we have plenty of stuff, and we keep writing all the time. So there's a lot of creative energy in this band. Everybody is allowed to write, or is actually, I, you know, I encourage everyone to write as much as they want, and we pick the best songs for the album, so... Yeah, there's a lot of there's no danger of running out of ideas or songs, you know. We're gonna keep doing this, and the band's getting tighter. Music just keep getting better, and you know, it's a great situation to be in. You know, so all I'm hoping for for the future is that we can expand our fame a little, you know, all over the world and in, in other places than the places we've been playing so far. And, uh, you know, spread the word. <laughs> you know, play this band. I would play before or after anybody, any any band in the world. You name it, Rolling Stones, whoever. This will be, uh, you know, because this band is uh, it's got a got something special to offer. All right, then uh, you already mentioned the the partying and sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Does that old cliche ring true? No, at I, all I wrote a song called "Dead Jail or Rock and Roll." That's more reality, you know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. And, uh, Thank you. All the best. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Shake hands. Oh. Do the business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I went here from the beginning of my career. I started out with nothing. I still got most of this. Best.